got to be the type of person who is well informed. That's involved with reading. That's involved with just experience, or that's involved being surrounded by the right people who are feeding you the knowledge. And I think that's what makes a great personality. That's what makes a, a great personality man. host. You are now listening to the BV Mobile Apps Podcast. The show is designed to help you grow your mobile app audience and get advice from experts in your industry. Now, here's your host, Sean Garvey. Good day, everyone. This is the architect, Sean Garvey, and welcome to another great edition of the BV Mobile Apps Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. I want you guys to stay tuned towards the end of the podcast. We're going to give you information on how you can get your app customized through BV Mobile Apps. So stay tuned for more information on that. But in the meantime, I have another great guest. You know, I always bring great guests on the BV Mobile Apps Podcast to give you information on how you can become successful in the industry and today we're going to focus on how to be a successful radio host and joining with me on the bv mobile apps podcast today is a radio host and he's also a radio network owner he has this great amazing show called the kicking it with kc show uh, you can get it anywhere from all the streaming services that are available right now online and this podcast is simply amazing he's going to talk about that and more including how to be a successful radio host. Joining on the phone lines with me is the one and only KC Ingram. KC, good day, good afternoon. How you doing? <laughs> how you doing, Sean? Appreciate it, brother. I appreciate the good words there. You're I'm welcome. May, I'm, I'm well. Good, good. And uh, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us as we talk about how to be a successful radio host. And from my understanding, KC, uh, we actually did a recent podcast about how to be a successful radio personality but there's a difference mm -hmm. between a radio personality and a radio host we want to break all that down into a few layers there uh later on the podcast and also talk about some other uh great information that we want our listeners to know and also engage in one piece of the conversation that everybody has been talking about for several weeks now. Uh, but I want to learn more about KC Ingram uh, behind the mic, behind everything that you do. You are uh, not only a radio host and a radio network owner, uh, your profession was in IT security. And not only that, yeah. but you are an HBCU alumni. Now, if that's not black excellence, I don't know what is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the house that's right right <laughs> more house college <laughs> yes sir yeah that's so who is kc ingram so um a lot of people probably define me as um i don't know i'm i'm kind of like everybody's go-to guy and, and what i mean by that is I, i'm i i have a very outgoing personality and a very helpful, caring spirit. So I always want to reach out and, you know, help as many people as I can. And that's kind of how my career has been being in IT, the same type of thing. So uh, I'm a resource. People call me about any and everything. I don't know why they think I might know the answer, but mm -hmm. just say, hey, man, I'm just going to bounce this off you. And the thing is, I'm the, I got a personality. If I don't know, I'm like, okay, give me a second, man. <laughs> You know, it's so funny you say that, Kesey, because me and you, we have a few things in common so far, because I'm also considered to be that go to person for everything. Like Sean knows the answers to this. Sean knows the answer to that. So I just find that very interesting that you, you said that in the introduction. Uh, I mean, what what is it like to be that go to person? Do you always want to be represented as that go to person or do you just see yourself beyond being that go-to person? Well, the, the thing is, is you know, um, <laughs> I, I, it's strongly aligned to IT. You know what I mean? Think of, my first IT job was probably help desk support. So I was that person where, okay, you called me and you told me whatever type of issue you had. So it was a skill in listening to what you had to, you know, speak about your problem. You had to listen to it and then come up and sort and and and, and sort of, and put your answer uh, after figuring out what it is that they had issue with. And then say, okay, we're going to do this. 
That's the solution. But the problem is, over time, and the wife attests to this, is I become so numb to listening <laughs> <laughs> that I already got an answer probably before you even finish saying what you're saying. Right. You know what I mean? Or, so I might be, I might even have an issue with tuning you out at some point. You know what I mean? It's just so many years of that. So <laughs> go, being the go-to person has its, its, its ups and its downs because you might not know the answer. And I'm that type of person that if it's really something that I, I'm intrigued about, I'm going to find that answer. I'm going to spend a lot of time trying to find an answer. I can't even believe. Why is that? I don't even know why that's happening. You know, I'm that type of person. That's, that, that's, I can't sleep. Morehouse College, and you heard me mention, the listeners heard me mention a few moments ago about uh, you being an HBCU alumni. You graduated from Morehouse College in 1994. Uh, not telling yep. the listeners your real age when I say 1994. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to say 1994 feels like it was yesterday. What were some of the lessons that you learned going into the profession that you are currently in right now? So actually, I was a business major. I had business major. I had communication. I had technology. I had uh, all those things, finance, all that stuff mixed in one. My major actually was business. Okay. And being able to, at, at that time, the difference is I actually, I love, as a passion, I love technology. Because I was a guy, you know, one of a lot of people had personal computers in that room. I had my own uh, computer. My father sent me down to Atlanta with a computer. And I actually was able to handle a lot of the business on the computer when I had to go to the lab as well as try to make some side hustle money, you know, typing up papers or whatever <laughs> that we did. Mm -hmm. But technology was more of so a passion then because I tried to, I tried to uh, become an IT major. And I just wasn't that guy with the coding. You know what I mean? You guys are good. Y'all actually do, you know, coding and do apps and all that stuff. At that time, when I had to sit down with Pascal and uh, Pascal, Pascal, I forgot how you say it, and Basic and COBOL, man, those languages, woo, they were crazy. And then the whole thing about coding, you get one thing wrong and your whole program is, you know, malfunctioning. So that was, that was real tough. We're having that patience then. This is something that you encourage young boys and young girls to get into, uh, which is technology and coding. Because uh, if you look at mm -hmm. the climate that we're in right now from an economic standpoint, technology is always in demand. Everything that we do, even this podcast that we're doing, it, it aligns itself with technology. If it wasn't for technology, I don't think any of us would be doing what we're doing right now. Uh, is it something that you strongly encourage to young boys and young girls growing up in the industry? And if so, why? What, what's the answer? So I'm going to say yes off the chain. Uh, number one, think about it. Babies, one years old, two years old, three years old, first thing they're doing, they're grabbing your phone, they're grabbing the tablet you got. They're born into technology. They're born directly on the internet. So you're already in this world. There's no way to avoid that. Now, why not be in a field where you know it's going? It's always going to be around. It's always going to be some type of technology, and things are ran on technology. Things are ran uh, in the field of innovation. So coding, if you can get coding, especially I've seen several um, free coding camps and classes. Um, I've seen some young African-American uh, camps. I think I, they're by the AUC. I remember my son actually went and attended one. Uh, they taught robotics and everything by Morehouse and Spelman uh, uh, students. That one was an awesome thing. You got Georgia Tech that offered coding. You got uh, Black Girls Code. You got so many different offerings that put you into the game but right off the bat i mean i like i tell my son who's 19 freshman in college but he doesn't have the interest in it like i tell him coding is the way of the world especially with being I mean, now that i'm in internet security i see all of these they're called internet of things so now you have different things like your microwave you know having wi-fi or your your your, your refrigerator or your washing machine 
or the doorbell or the temperature. All this stuff is now on Wi-Fi. All this stuff is talking and communicating in your house. So <laughs> it's only going to get bigger and better. Robotics, automation, all this stuff. It's, it's going to continue to grow. Why not be in a field, especially if they're giving you this free education? Get in it and learn it. Yep. yep. So I'm thumbs up with that one. KC Ingram is on the live line with us right here on the BV Mobiles podcast with yours truly, the architect here, Sean Garvey. And we are talking about how to be a successful radio host if you're just tuning in. Uh, and speaking of being a successful radio host, we are all familiar with one person, and that is Doug Stewart. I, I've been following his career for quite some time. Uh, when you think of the two live stews, you think of Doug Stewart. And you grew up as a fan listening and, and watching the many moves of Doug Stewart, listening to him on the air and showcasing his brand. Uh, and, and to some people, that seems like not only just being a fan, but to some degree, a form of mentorship. But uh, let's yeah. let's talk about Doug Stewart for a moment and how he became an influence to you and, and an aspiring person to you in your career. Like how much of a influential impact has Doug Stewart made into you and your career? <laughs> just talk to just talk to Doug right before your call. <laughs> he called me in regards <laughs> to uh listen, another go to. He had an issue trying to get into Zoom. He had an error. Hey man, how do I get around it? And so again, you know, he might bounce something off of me. But I say this, I I was a listener of uh two live stools on seven nine in the zone way back. And the transition after them leaving the air and going to, uh, or, or Doug going to the podcast world, uh, first on YouTube and then over to Spreaker. Spreaker uh, had a unique, um, a unique uh, community to it because of it, it, while he did his podcast, it also had a, a feel of an old school chat room mm -hmm. because you had people that can create the avatar, create the nicknames. And he did a radio, he, he did a rate his podcast was more so of a radio show that he did every day from 10 to one, five days a week. So we were in there like a family community in there, listening to the show and communicating and, you know, saying laughing and, and, you know, just basically clowning each other and, and, and laughing at the uh, things that, you know, Doug would say. So it was a family that was created every day. From that point, we, um, we, you know, Spreaker's has advertised on the side to, hey, do your own podcast. So a couple of us tried. So, okay, we'll do a podcast. And at the same time, his show producer, True Taylor, actually, uh, and himself, they formulated where they would do a mentor, a mentoring program, or not necessarily a program, but they would actually allow us podcasters to go under the tutelage of Tree, who would, who would give us you know, pointers, tips, advice on how to sharpen up our show. And uh, basically our, our, our show would be ran on their network. And so that started out under, uh, under his network, you know what I mean? The TDSS network, the Stuart Show Network was what it was called then. And I used to come on after him. <laughs> so it was pretty cool, you know what I mean? A radio legend like that. But you take a lot from the way that he brought um, experience to the game because he knew how to control the mic. He knew how to control the crowd. You know what I mean? Um, the right time to take breaks, the right breath control, the right, you know, so many things that, 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 that are involved with it that you don't realize, but you know, he would incite, you know what I mean? Incite excitement in regards to certain topics or, or have you laughing or have you mad or whatever it is. You know what I mean? And, and that's what is involved with a great radio personality. Any advice or is there one particular advice that you got from Doug Stewart during your time of knowing him? Anything that stood out to you to where it would be something to where you could be like, you know, what, I'm, I'm passing this over to the next generation or to the person that is coming up behind me. I'm going to use the same type of logic uh, that was passed on to me by one of the greats 
Doug Stewart. Any advice that Doug Stewart may have given to you in your career in radio broadcasting? It was definitely quality and attention to detail. You know what I mean? On our network, it was strict things that, you know, he, he would say. You know, he didn't, if you had a podcast, you had a room of five or six people, five or six mics need to be in that room. Not a bunch of people gathered around one mic because it sounded like you were all across the room and the sound just didn't sound right. So he really was a stickler for certain details. And um, I ain't going to say perfection, but definitely having a high quality product. Mm-hmm. Not just he, but also Tree Taylor. So both together as a team, yeah, they, like I said, they formulated um, just a professional sounding uh, podcast, you know, for. The, the shows that were under the network. So that's one thing that I can say. Uh, I, and I'm going to piggyback on a few things that you said just now, a few moments ago about talk breathers and breaks, uh, all the essentials that make up a good radio host. Uh, now, according to our sources here, a radio personality or a radio presenter is a person who has an on air position in radio broadcasting a radio personality who hosts a radio show is also known as a radio host, which coincides with each other. Uh, but I always seem to look at being a radio personality is different from a radio host. To you, is there a difference between a radio personality and a radio host? And if so, what is the difference between being a radio personality and a radio host? All right. So a radio personality, I'll say this because you got two different people. You got so if you think about a radio host, you have especially here in Atlanta radio, you've got shows and you may have a three man team. Now all three of them are what they call quote unquote radio hosts. And because they may have be on a big name show, they may be a radio personality. But then then you have a lesser name show which may have a radio personality such as, I don't know, like a Ricky Smiley, I'll use his name. But then you have hosts who are also lesser known who are also on the show. The difference between a host and a personality is, okay, a host is a title because you're, you're, all, you're on the show. A personality is someone who has to bring it every day to capture and garner the attention and the audience every day. You know what I mean? You can host the show, but a personality is someone that's, that has the attention grabbing, something that attracts you to that show something that has you following that personality to the point where, okay, you're like, um, I want to follow him on social media. I want to know more about him. You know, you're, you're, you become almost what they call a star. You know what I mean? You're that, you're under that scrutiny. You're under that magnification (laughs) and people want to know what you're doing, what you're up to, what's going on. You know what I mean? That's, that's what a radio personality, the level between the difference between a radio personality and a radio host. I want to talk about other things that make a good, not just only a good, but a great radio host. What other things make a great radio host when it's time to get on the mic and talk to your listening audience? Um, one is to have a, one thing I do, I like about certain shows is I like well thought out answers. You know what I mean? So if you're going to engage and go down the line of a topic, you can't just be like, yeah, no, <laughs> you know, that, that mm-hmm. person like, okay, what's the rest? You have to elaborate. You have to be well thought. I mean, you have to be well, well spoken and you have to have um, some thought behind what you're, what you're doing. So in order to do that, you've got to be the type of person who is well informed. I don't know if you're, you know, that's involved with reading that's involved with just experience or that's involved being surrounded by the right people who are feeding you the knowledge, but you got to have some kind of experience yeah. in order, and, and have gone through something or experienced something in order to elaborate on certain things. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what makes a great personality. That's what makes a, a great personality slash host is the ability to, if someone throws something at you, you're able to bounce back and, you know, just, you know, uh, a role or whatever the topic is at that time, because anything can happen. Like this, this pandemic, something happened, you know, we had the pandemic, we have racial injustice, racial 
uh, uh, um, issues with racial relations right now. Those types of things, you may not be been very experienced at it, but because you're well read, you know what I mean, or, and you have actually um, thought about certain outcomes or certain things that are solutions or, or what the root of certain problems are, then you can ask and you can answer these types of uh, these type of questions or topics if presented with them on your show. Let's say, for example, a newcomer that's on the scene mm-hmm. and he or she is starting out as an intern. Uh, there's plenty of internships mm-hmm. that are given to college students or people that are just coming out of college to work in an environment at a radio station. And they just happen to be assigned to do internship hours at a news and talk radio station. And you and, and interns are put into position to do the research, to get the news information and to give it to the host so that hosts can elaborate and talk about the things that are going on in society and community and around the world. However, there's a way to go about getting the news. And most importantly, it's all about getting the information from the right sources. Uh, Mm -hmm. There are some sources that are not credible. Uh, What sources, what reliable sources do you recommend for young talent and for interns to get their information from? All right. So this one is a little crazy because, all right, number one, me being an IT guy, I, I, I'll tell you this, as far as web, there's certain things that I look at. I look at reputable websites and, and it could be a website you never heard of, but for the most for the most part, I'm, I'm sticking to most of the news outlets, your BBC, your CNN, MSNBC, your CBS, your, CNN, your, uh, your ABC, all of the, 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 the major news outlets, your, your Washington Post, New York Daily, New York Post, all those different things. So, I, so, I, so, you, so you have that information, and for the most part, you, you, you hope they're credible <laughs> for, <laughs> because it's hard – to really discern if it's if it's credible or not credible, but a lot of times for me, if I, I compare several sources, I see if it's if it's trending on several things. If it's trim, trending on several things, then that means these sources all are in alliance that this information is correct or factual. But it could be something where someone is sick or passing away or, or something like that, and the information is really sketchy. So. I look at that, and the other thing I do is if I get a website that comes up with something strange and weird and it's not a reputable website, I fact check with the Snopes.com. That's the, the fact check. They may have something that says, okay, this is not true information and the reason why it's not true information. But, I mean, in IT security, I avoid a lot of the, 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 the strange places anyway because, you know, you click on it and next thing you know, your, your computer's full of malware, spam, et cetera. But for the most part, um, reliable information is um, if it's some, something that's, that's seriously credible, it will be disseminated everywhere. You know, you go to Google and hit news for the past, day or, or this week or whatever and you'll see those stories kind of surface <laughs> you know what i mean they'll be there because it's credible unless you're the source where it broke you know you're the one that broke the story right and at that point you know you may be the only source for a little while before the rest of the world gets it right so that's yeah. my thought process on yeah and to tie in with that because people so many people gravitate to social media nowadays and social media is that platform where you pretty much see the news first. That's how I'm able yeah. to find out this news story or, or what news story is breaking is by way of social media. We do have a uh, a service that we use where we get breaking news also. Um, but social media just is, is that place to go to nowadays for any type of yeah. latest developments, uh, news developments, breaking news and that sort of thing. But we have to be careful, not just only as personalities, hosts and journalists and and people in the media. We also have to be careful of who is delivering that information to 
uh, daily viewers and consumers of social media. Uh, and it shows the credits at the bottom of the footage, whether it's a video footage or a picture, a still picture of a story. We have to look at the credits below and see where it came from. Did it come from, like you mentioned just a few moments ago, uh, did it come from CNN? Did it come from Fox News? Or did it come from TMZ? Or did it come from World Star? <laughs> that sort of thing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so social media plays a very very instrumental role in how we get news nowadays social media didn't exist 25 30 years ago uh we had a a, a different kind of social media but not in the way that social media it is now uh so it's just very right. imperative that we be mindful of where we getting the information from especially if it comes from social media and, and social media also has so much i don't understand why people who passed away just for some reason disseminate that comes back out all the time people who pass away that that story for some reason comes out five years later yeah. for some reason ed bradley has passed away again this week like wow <laughs> again he passed away again this week wow okay gc <laughs> <laughs> Kesey Ingram from the Kicking It With Kesey show uh, available on all streaming services right now. He's on the live lines with us right here on the BV Mobiles podcast with your host, Sean Garvey. Let's talk about talk breaks and breathers for a moment. You talked about it a little bit uh, just a few moments ago as we were talking about uh, your mentor, Doug Stewart. And uh, people want to know, especially people that want to get into this business, what are talk breaks? And how long do talk breaks have to be? So a talk break is basically a reset. You know, you're, you're going down the line about a topic. And the thing is, um, with that topic, you may, me and you may be going, I don't know, five, six minutes on it. And people, you know, they're, they're listening in. And you want them to continue to tune in, but you don't want the subject to necessarily be monotonous. So a reset is basically a break away from that topic to go into another topic. And that could be just a quick, it could be a, a, a quick uh, um, station identification. It could be a, um, a little blurb of music for 30 seconds. You know what I mean? It's just a, it's just a, a, a way of breaking up the, the, the topic to, to start on to another topic and just basically prepare the, the, the listener to say, okay, cool. All right. I heard that art. Now what's next? That's pretty much what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what about breathers as well? Because you mentioned a very important role as a radio host. What about breathers? What, what, what does that mean to the uh, new talent and, and listeners that are listening right now? Well, again, the monotonous of uh, a voice, you know what I mean? If, if I was a guy with monotone that says, um, so, what we have here is we have situations where the racial relations are this, 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 this. You know, if I talk like that <laughs> and you're listening, okay, even though my topic or my subject may be great, at some point in time, you may be tuned out. Like, okay, this dude is making me tired and sleepy. You know what I mean? So a breather is just being able to, it's it's almost um, in speeches or in, 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 I don't know if anybody has speech class, but it's it's a it's a technique where you're able to deliver to the audience in fluctuation of voice as well as um, being able to to connect directly to them, and you know with highs, lows, um, accents on certain words, and just that necessary pause. See how I did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that necessary pause. It's, it's, a, it's a pause, and then I come back with what I'm trying to say. You know, that alleviates something that I cannot stand personalities doing on the radio. And I know you hear it a whole lot of times, KC, because uh, I actually, in my first years of doing radio, I was guilty of doing them, but it's the ums. Yeah. The ums. <laughs> and I, I still hear oh, yeah. I still hear oh. some personalities do it, whether they work in talk radio at an all music station. The ums is where a personality would think of what he or she is gonna say next and to prevent dead air on the radio they say um 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 and I remember but yeah. 
everybody everybody has a comforting word like some of us say you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know what i mean you yeah. don't even know you're doing it you don't even know you're doing it but it just comes out after every it's a it's a comfort word i took a speech class and it's a, it's something you know i said um it's it's something that feels in and you have to be very conscious that you're doing it <laughs> to avoid it I remember uh, there was a radio station once upon a time ago, maybe still be in existence to this very day. But this radio host told listeners to call in at this number at this time and participate in this contest called Don't Say Um Contest. And it was the personality or the radio host way of letting people know this job that we have here as a radio host or as a radio announcer can be very hard at times because we have to be very conscious of trying to not say um a lot so if you can do better than we can on the radio then hey you may have a shot in radio who knows <laughs> that is correct that is that is absolutely correct and i remember that show too i cannot remember what it was but i remember that as well <laughs> yeah it was it was in atlanta okay so moving on uh, as far as uh, how to be successful as a radio host, how to be a successful radio host, let's talk a moment about the pay. Because uh, there's people that are listening to us right now and want to learn about the monetization of working in this field. Uh, how do radio hosts or radio personalities get paid for what they are doing? All right, so that's the that's the question is because it's almost like it's almost like the music game. You can be an independent artist or you can be a signed artist. It's the same thing with this radio host uh, um, industry. You can go get a job with a radio station and get an hourly check or a salary or whatever the arrangement is, or you can do like we do. And create your own lane, create your own radio show slash podcast or even for a network. Now, of course, the second option is a little more tougher, a little harder, because now you're in control of creating your own brand, your own listenership. You're, you, you have to either market yourself. You probably got to do that on your own for the beginning before you put your marketing team together. But you got to come up with a whole concept of who you are, what you're going to talk about, why should people listen to you. After that, once you start doing your show to get monetization, shows will pay you for listenership through advertising. So there's all kinds of companies out here who will pay advertisers. There's actually advertising companies out here that say, okay, we're looking for good podcasts and we'll put ads on it. You need to have this amount of listeners, though. But in addition to that, you can also go to your own local communities, and now this is this was this is grassroots because you're doing a show and you're in a certain market, but yet there may be a barber shop or a hair salon or a nail salon or a car lot or some type of small business that would need new um a target audience to come to them and you have that audience because your show has listeners and you are the the person who delivers so therefore advertising is a, a great source of income and it doesn't have to be high you start out low you say okay per episode ten dollars per episode mm -hmm. graduated 25 50 whatever 100 whatever it is as far as your numbers but yeah you it's 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 what you do it's what you make out of the podcast industry has grown to be a $1 billion industry, which surpasses terrestrial radio. Terrestrial radio wow. is still in existence, and you have listeners that listen to podcasts just as much as they listen to terrestrial radio or satellite radio or any kind of radio platform that is still out there. But you just mentioned something that was very important, and that is getting the listeners. It, it can be challenging at times to grow a listening base for your podcast platform or for your internet radio station. Because I tell people all the time, I tell people that 
with terrestrial radio, the audience is still there. All you have to do is get in your car, turn on the radio, turn to whatever your favorite radio station is, and it's there. Whereas with internet radio and podcasts, you have to hook your Bluetooth up. You have to hook your <laughs> phone to the aux right. cord and connect it to the uh, stereo. And you got to search for this radio show. You got to do this. It, it seems like it's 10, 20 steps to get right. to your favorite internet radio show and podcast versus terrestrial radio where you only have to just turn it on and there you go. Um, yeah. Do you find that to be very challenging? And if so, how can one overcome that? And, and how have you overcame oh. that as a radio host? I know that's a three part <laughs> question there. <laughs> oh, no, no. Cause this is, I'm passionate about that one. Me and Doug speak about this a lot because, and I think it has something to do with age. <laughs> and I know that sounds crazy, but my oldest son and youngest son, oldest son of 21, youngest son, no, I'm sorry, oldest son of 25, youngest son of 19, they can't tell you the radio stations in the city. They hear V103 if we're playing it or whatever, they're in passing, but they never listen to the radio. They never listen to the radio. They're on streaming sources, of course, right? They're on your Spotify. They're on your Tidal. They're on the Apple Music. They're on all that stuff. But the radios, the new technology, the new radios that you're buying in your car now have the apps enabled. So, okay, it's cool. And a lot of times people do want to connect their phone because they have their own personalized playlist and they have certain things that they want to listen to that they're not going to get on the radio. So as an older person, we're used to, we're programmed, okay, we want to know what's going on in the world. So we're listening to talk show, talk radio, or Ryan Cameron or whoever uh, Atlanta personality is uh, in Atlanta, um, well, we, we will listen to that because it's something that we're familiar with and we, and this is where the quote unquote personality comes in effect because we're used to listening to this person as being a part of our day every day. Like, oh, I gotta jump in the car. I gotta turn on Frank Ski because it's the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, so you turn it on, you turn them on because it's just, that's your natural thing that you do when you ride into work now as a younger person you get in you don't move your car until you got your phone set up you got your station right <laughs> i mean you got what you're listening to right your playlist you know what i mean they real right. serious about their <laughs> connection and their bluetooth and the aux cord and all that you know what i mean <laughs> and it's crazy I, I ubered on the side once and you know everybody come and get in the car like hey uh an aux cord like yeah on you. I used to be free about letting them play what they want to. Here's the aux cord. Plug it up. Get it in. But yeah, music is a way of, it's always been a way of expression for years, for all, you know, for decades, for, you know, thousands and thousands of years. So now it's still that way. It's just a different way for, for me being an older guy. My expression is a little different from the way they express their, 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 uh, their ways and their ideas. But, you know, I speak about certain radio stations big time, WBLS in New York and some other stuff up in New York. My son was in New York. He was like, what is WBLS? I was like, come on, man. Are you serious? <laughs> but, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a different world. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this, because you are heavily involved in podcasts. Do you take mm -hmm. the same formatics? that you used or that you experienced in terrestrial radio and put it into podcasts. Cause we know, all know that when we think of podcasts, we think of talk radio, you are yeah. in control and what you want to talk about. You have more creative control than you did when you was on the other side, uh, which is terrestrial radio. Like, do you use those same formatics that you used in terrestrial radio into podcasts or can you actually do whatever you want to do with podcasts? With, with this, you can do whatever you want to do. And the cool thing is with my radio network, x Radio Network, I have to throw plugs in here, but <laughs> <laughs> my radio network, I um, we have 15 shows. And we talk sports talk. Most of the shows are sports talk. Then we got music shows. Then we got social commentary. But the thing about the sports talk shows is we're trying not to regurgitate the same thing that you hear on the, on the major networks out here. You know what I mean? When you listen to certain major networks, there's certain things that they narrate or they're trying to put across. And we may have our own 
spin on it or our own uh, 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 concentration of what we're trying to put out there. So we have the ability to, to, to spin it and to say what we want to say, uh, unfiltered, no FCC laws or none of that stuff where, you know, you have to, you know, watch what you say. We can say it how we want to say it. And then after we're done with our live show, it becomes a podcast that's out to the world. It's now on iHeart, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, TuneIn Radio, every all in places, as well as on my actual BB mobile app. Yes, and I'm glad you said that, and we're actually going to get into that in just a few moments. Uh, the app is the new wave of all things considered media uh, at the center of your fingertips. You can just go directly to the podcast network or to that podcast platform and listen to all kinds of content uh, just by way of the app as a radio broadcaster and as a radio consumer, I do it all the time. <laughs> Even if whether I'm at home or in my car, I, I listen to it and uh, I listen to nothing but talk radio. Um, most of the time, if I'm not listening to talk radio, of course, I'm listening to music, but I'm listening to talk radio most of the time to stay informed, to stay aware of yep. what's going on. And uh, this is a great transition to talk about the different things that are going on right now in our society and in our world. Uh, I mentioned this in a previous podcast that now we're not just only in a COVID-19 pandemic, but we are in a racial pandemic. Uh, we are all aware about the recent incidents that has happened amongst our young black African-American brothers and sisters and, and people that have lost their lives um, by violence, uh, being unarmed, uh, being black and being um, accused for something that they did not do or for petty stuff and, and, and get murdered by the hands of uh, bad police officers. We don't want to just say police officers because there are some good cops that are out there, good police officers that are out there, but you have some bad apples that are out there. And other people that feel like they are more superior than their black counterparts. And by you doing a podcast, by you doing a show, I know you touch heavily on various subjects that are pertaining to yep. um, racial tensions and and racism in society but for one that wants to do a podcast and, and talk about that and, and want to provide that platform to have that place for people to express their thoughts on racial tensions in america and in society how can one go about doing that and, and what are the ramifications that one person has to look out for when it comes to putting together a conversation about racism and racial tensions in America on a platform. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you how. <laughs> All right. All right, so number one, this is my level of expression here because uh, the wife said, okay, we can't really, we ain't really been out in the streets. Well, we finally got out to the streets Saturday, but before that, you know, we weren't at the certain things and my wife is really big on being active. How can we be active? How can we just not sit here, you know? So she's really big into, you know, us, being involved with certain things, social change and, uh, you know, awareness on injustice. And um, I have the ability because I have this platform and this mic to get on and say what I want to say and how I want to say it. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking on that, I'm able to, you know, say what I want to say. That's like the, my, over the weekend I had a show and I spoke in regards to the situation because I had a couple planned shows where I haven't been able to really say anything. For, so it was like a bottle mm -hmm. that was, it was like I was getting bottled up because I, I couldn't do my show because I was doing interviews or whatever that weren't related. And then finally on Saturday, I said, okay, I'm doing a show. Uh, we call it a pop-up show. Cause I just, you know, do it at any time. So I did a pop-up show on Saturday and was able to vent and say what I want to say. All right. Now, the repercussions to that is if you work at a company <laughs> employed by someone, mm -hmm. you know, it, it could be a very conservative company. You know, it could be somebody who has listened to the show and said, oh, I do not like his opinion. I can't believe he said that. So now they call me out on social media or whatever. And then the job said, oh, listen to his podcast. And then, oh, he just said this. Next thing you know, you lost your job. 
<laughs> it's the same thing in social media. People losing their job over a tweet. It's the same thing that can happen with a podcast with you expressing yourself. Me, I, I can't say I don't care, but I walk the line, I guess, very close to it. <laughs> so, so it becomes a liability issue uh, for those yes. that that take it to the next level in that podcast to touch on those serious subjects and express strong views and opinions about a particular subject. Well, what about disclaimers? Yep. Can a disclaimer protect you from saying all the things that you say on a podcast to avoid or to prevent you from getting fired at your other job? What about a disclaimer? And what is a disclaimer? I think a disclaimer can be used for me. Uh, for me versus, let me see. I'm trying to think. Like I know on my network, if a guy is really going all the way off. <laughs> Then he may we'll we'll make a joke and say okay this the, the views of the host does not uh, express the views of uh, X Y Radio you know so we'll do that but um I don't think it really going to matter if it comes down to it you know if you got a very heavy uh, a conservative company or you know your 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 uh, leadership of your company is a certain way totally opposite of what you just expressed. You know, this is a this is one of those states, man. Uh, what do they call it? Uh, uh, at will state. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if that's the correct ter- the right term, but <laughs> basically, Georgia can fire you for any reason at any time without having to uh, even give you a reason. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, right. I don't think you had a protection. I don't think I don't think I don't think the disclaimer is going to help you. Those that may not be aware of what a disclaimer is, a disclaimer is. A can be a live read or a pre-recorded reading where it says the views and opinions expressed on today's show doesn't reflect those of this particular company. So it just prevents that form of liability if you say something that doesn't match up with other opinions, other people's opinions within that company or outside the company. So you need that protection whenever you are doing a radio show, whether it's on an internet radio podcast platform or on terrestrial radio. Okay, so let's talk about your platform. Uh, you've been doing the Kicking It radio show for how long? Uh, let's see, doing the Kicking It KC show for now, I think five years now. It might be going on six, but yeah. Okay, five so you, or six years. All right, all right, so you've been doing it for a few years. And for those that are may not be too familiar with your platform, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the Kicking It with key c show what is it all about so my show i've i've i am that guy who i'm i'm, I'm all around as far as uh, uh different topics for the most part my topics have um been in regards to um empowerment self-empowerment improvement uh business owners like they may have a highlight or a a, a, a um um, will basically speak or, or, or edify the type of businesses they're doing, like why they're, why they're in their business and uh, what type of advice they have, kind of like what you're doing and what kind of advice do you have for, you know, someone up and coming in that industry. I have that type of show. I have a lot of music artists. Show. That probably be one of my stronger shows. I'm a music artist because I, I independent artists, I've been in the the uh, realm of dealing with independent artists for now, I don't know, 10, 15 years as well. We used to do a music conference in Charlotte called the Mid-Atlantic Music Conference. So it targeted independent and unsigned artists. So I have a, uh, you know, a true um, admiration for those artists to, you know, who out, who out there grinding. And a lot of times they'll send me music and if it's awesome, I'm like, hey, man, let's do an interview. Let's talk about it. Because a podcast is a great way of putting out that product. You know, even if you did your own podcast, just put out your own product. I mean, it's just a great way of advertising and marketing. And that's one thing. Um, I also have had some artists, some known artists. Um, I've had uh, Cujo from the Goody Mob. I've had Big Gip from the Goody Mob. I've had them on. I've had... Um, Joe Joe Brown. I've had him on. I've had uh, Nick. What's Nick's last name? He was actually from the Chop the Chop Show. He was one of the winners of um, Chop. Nick Wallace from Mississippi. 
but he was also one of the winners from the Chop Show on uh, Food Network. Um, just you know, it, it's it's a random set of people, but we'll talk about you know whatever is just interesting, and uh, that's the name of it, kicking it with Keith is because I you know I, I'm we're having a conversation like me and you, you know, we'll just get in and hit a topic and and just make it you know interesting, and it's a live chat audience. And we uh, fire our show up. So very interactive. You mentioned some big names just a few moments ago that uh, have came and made appearances on your podcast. Do big names uh-huh. bring in big numbers uh, from a podcast standpoint compared to just having somebody that's upcoming or no name, no name or just people that are new to the listeners? Uh, do you see a comparison in that? A big name will bring a big number because of the fact, and it may not even be at that time because the podcast is out to the world and it's just, it's there forever unless you take it down. It, uh, it will, as long as it has the right description tags and titles, people will always search for that. If you're a fan of, okay, you're a fan of Big Gip and you're looking like, okay, let me see what I find on Big Gip. My podcast may show up in that Google search. So therefore, those type of shows will always have that digital imprint that will continue to bring numbers in, especially if it's something that, you know, is just that, that, that that's relevant that people are looking at. So that's very important to a new podcaster. If he or she wants to start a podcast platform and they have these type of connections to get big name people on their podcast or even independent artists that want to be guests on their podcast, you have to make sure that you hashtag who they are, what the content is about. Also put in the description box what the podcast is about, the name of the podcast, and, and just as much detail as possible when putting out a podcast like that because you want to be able to drive traffic. That's the objective of putting out a podcast is for people to listen to your content, but in order for people to listen to your content, you must have that traffic. Yeah, you, that, I, because like I said, with the fifteen with the fifteen uh, hosts that I have, that's something I I have to beat over some of the host's head. Like, okay, we do a live show, but once you're done, it's out to the world. And if you didn't do the right tagging and description and information and titles, nobody's ever gonna know what you're talking about. It's gonna, you know, especially when it hits the other platforms. When it's on Spotify, nobody's going to find that podcast or even be interested in finding it. It's like, this is your time to shine. This is your time to make that podcast reach the world. You can't speak for it. So let it speak for itself. Make sure you have the right information encoded in it so that it can maybe luckily get pulled into a Google search or whatever. So KC, we, we running out of time right here on the BB Mobiles podcast with Sean Garvey, but I want you to go ahead and really quick, Tell people how they can listen to your podcast, how can they download the app, and you also build a podcast network called xsquadaffiliates.com. Talk more Mm -hmm. about that really quick and the the intricacies of building a podcast network from the ground up. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, my show, Kicking With Kesey, show... um, is found on all the platforms. Um, I'll tell you how I do it. So I record live on my radio network, X squad radio network on Thursdays. Uh, once I, um, finish with my show at the end of the night, I actually edit it and I put it up as a upload on my own platform. My own platform is, uh, kicking with KC show found at KC.com. At KC.com, there's links to my show as well as how to download the uh, mobile app. The mobile app is also in all of the um, mobile stores, such as Apple, um, Google Play, as well as BlackBerry. And yes, there are still some BlackBerry listeners out there in Mm -hmm. other other regions, (laughs) other nations, I should say. But uh, yeah, it's found there as well. Um, the, The network was formulated because all of us that were too under tutelage of Doug Stewart, we, we were all in the same lane of doing shows. 
And I decided, so I'm going to put a website up that says, okay, you can go to this one-stop shop and, and, and listen to these shows. That was xyaffiliates.com. We decided, okay, we're going to pool our money together and get this network plan, which allows us to have unlimited space, time. Um, we can run 24-7, any day, all day, every day, like a radio station. And it can be where you don't have a, 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 a a, a saved file, you know, it can just run and just, just play just like a radio station would be, would do, you know, it's not necessarily an archived file or you can record and save and have a, a podcast at the end. So you get both options, but my, um, my website, X squad affiliates.com also has a, a, a second URL, which is X radio.com. Either way, same destination. You'll find all my shows, 15 plus shows on it. Those shows have um, sports commentary, social social issues. We've got DJ music shows, um, and we got relationship shows. So I probably am going to speak with you guys as far as um, um, building a XY radio mobile app, probably modify mine to the network app because, I, like I said, I'm a guy who's, for the greater good, I feel like all my show hosts could probably, as, as well as me, including myself, would be all implemented into one rolled up package more so than doing two things at the same time. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I really, man, I, I like, so I love you guys for this product that y'all put out. It's, it's very necessary for those who are DJs, those who are podcasters, those who just have content because it gets out to the world and it, 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 nothing screams of authenticity than a website and a mobile app. Yeah. And you guys make it affordable and just having that option where it doesn't cost a lot to put a web, put, to put a, a, a mobile app together. You know, y'all, y'all, y'all made, y'all made it easy. Yeah. So kudos to you guys. Yeah. We, we make it easy. We make it mobile. <laughs> just like yeah. the saying. There you go. Thank you. But thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. KC Ingram from the Kicking It With KC show in which people can check out your podcast weekly Thursday evenings at www.kc.com. Yes, I still say www in 2020 and all the other right. major streaming platforms that are out there. Like you said, Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, iHeart and uh, a few other places, iTunes as well. And the Kicking It With KC mobile app is available. So make sure you go ahead and download that to listen to all kinds of great content. Uh, how can people follow you or where can people follow you at, KC? I'm on everything. I'm on Facebook as KC. I have the Kicking It With KC uh, Facebook group. I've got the X Squad Radio Network Facebook page. I'm on Twitter as at whole team that's my other side of business as well as at x squad affiliate that's on twitter on ig i'm at kicking it with kc and i'm also at x squad affiliate kc ingram thank you so much for being thank you. on the bv mobile apps podcast and being a part of the bv mobile apps family we really appreciate your time hey man kudos to you brothers man for doing what y'all do follow me sean garvey atl on twitter instagram sean garvey on facebook and please send all your comments and your feedback on today's show to podcast at bvmobileapps.com podcast at bvmobileapps.com and don't forget to get your app customized by our very own team over at bv mobile apps you can go to bvmobileapps.com right now to get your app customized and to hear this podcast that's bvmobileapps.com and you can follow BB Mobile Apps everywhere on social media and subscribe to the YouTube channel, BB Mobile Apps. This has been another great edition of the BB Mobile Apps podcast with your host, Sean Garvey. And I will talk to you on the next podcast. Take care. It's a new year. It's a new day. We're starting it over. Starting the day. Thank you for listening to the BV Mobile Apps Podcast with your host, Sean Garvey. For more information about BV Mobile Apps, visit the, the website. website.
bvmobileapps.com. Don't forget to follow BV Mobile Apps on social media at BV Mobile App. Tune in again next time on the BV Mobile Apps Podcast.